I call Simon O'Connor. What an excellent word uh, the, minute, the member opposite finished on, overdone, and I think that fully expresses what we've heard from the opposition tonight. Right. I want to primarily talk about health, but one thing I want to note from a, an earlier tirade against work and income, um, I want to say as someone who's worked within the Ministry of Social Development and many years prior in the community, I want to say thank you uh, to those people, particularly within the Ministry of Social Development, who day after day tirelessly go out and serve their people and community. I've heard that, I've heard that from the Minister, but I just want to add my own voice to that. So thank you to all that they do to serve other Kiwis uh, in this country. I want to turn to health, though. I think we've got some very good news stories there. And while it's not coming out of the government, I noticed as I came down to the House a breakthrough by the Maligan Institute, which I think is just symbolic of the great work that our uh, Kiwi health providers and scientists are doing. They've actually uh, worked out a way to deal with um, something like hookworm. I know it's not the most exciting topic, um, but it's something that affects a, a billion people. Uh, billion poorest people. And here in New Zealand, based out of Wellington, the Maligan Institute has worked out a way to create an immune response uh, to hookworm. And again, it's uh, a small thing in and of itself. Uh, but again, this has been led by uh, Kiwi scientists, Kiwi medical people. And I think it just provides a good context of how New Zealand leads the way, not only in immunological research, but also in health. Because we heard from uh, Minister Loto Inga uh, earlier some very uh, good statistics uh, that have come out of health uh, in general. And I think that's uh, pretty fantastic. You know, a health budget of 15.6 billion dollars. Uh, huge. Uh, we now know that 94 per cent of eight-month-year-olds uh, are fully immunised. We're going to reach the target of 95 per cent by the end of this year. And just a comparison, when we took over government in 2007, shamefully only 67 per cent of young people uh, were immunised. Yeah. But if I can just step away from the broad big numbers, I just want to reflect some of the good news stories we heard out of the DHBs in particular uh, that came before our select committee. Obviously um, there are too many uh, DHBs to review every year, so we take uh, a sample. Uh, but the Health Select Committee has been very hard at work and some of the themes within health that came to me was first of, uh, and foremost around financial improvement. Uh, no one shies away from the fact that times are always tough and every group wants more money from the government. But we saw in the DHB's financial improvement and a quick and good example is the likes of the Nelson Melbourne DHB that's actually moved from a deficit of about $2.9 million uh, two years ago now to a surplus of $4.4 million dollars. I think a really good example. Uh, we had the Northland DHB come uh, before us and I think their good news story amongst others was just how they are investing in new infrastructure. And while I'm proudly the MP for Tamaki, I'm originally a, a Whangarei boy, know the hospital uh, well, um, the investment they're making there, particularly in maternity wards and services, is really uh, impressive. Uh, turning back to Auckland, although not my DHB, I'm going to talk about Waitamata, we're hearing about life expectancy. Uh, a number of DHBs touched on this and it came up in the um, reviews. Um, increasing for New Zealanders. In uh, Waitamata is one example. The average age now is 85.1 years, or rather life expectancy. 85. Uh, yeah, one year, it's three years higher than most of the rest of the country. And in fact, it's even higher uh, for Maori in terms of their growth as well. They are four years above uh, the national average. Again, good news. Uh, we heard a lot about mental health services. That was a question that was raised quite often. Um, I turned therefore to Capital and Coast. Uh, we heard from them, Hutt Valley and the Wire Wrapper, all three together. And I note my colleague um, here, um, Alistair, uh, from that electorate, he would know this, but you know, the DHBs there have launched a new integrated mental health system. Its message is new service, no boundaries, and I think a marvellous example of how three DHBs work together. Um, other themes that came through, and it's particularly actually through uh, Barbara from New Zealand First, to give her credits around um, oral health, um, DHBs one after the other, your importance of fluoride. And I occasionally get in my electorate people who ignore the science, um, but the science is clear and the DHBs are clear. Fluoride in water makes a difference. And the same around immunisation. Immunise your children. That's a simple key message. There are no excuses or YouTube videos which can impress upon me any difference. And therefore... 
and therefore to move on to that, look at the southern DHB whose immunisation rates exceed the national targets. And I think that's a wonderful result uh, for southern. We also heard great stuff. Oh, I was just getting started.